Hi there, Chris from Totally EV, and here I'm joined with Katie Munnings. She's a professional rally driver. Katie, thank you so much for joining us on the interview today. Thanks for having me. It's great to chat to you. Really nice background as well. I like that. Good car. Nice choice. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so uh, speaking about the background, so it's um, your your racing career, and this will come into extreme. We will touch upon this in just a bit. Do let us know a little bit more about yourself and how you've got how you got into motorsports, generally speaking. So I grew up surrounded by motorsports, um, not the comp competition side, but um, my parents used to run like a motorsport entertainment company. So more like quad bikes and um, Honda Pilot buggies. Um, also, they did things like archery and clay pigeon shooting. It was a really kind of outdoor space. Um, so I grew up surrounded by that. I'd come home from school and jump onto the quad bikes and I'd be around in the mud in my school uniform. And um, I had a really cool upbringing from that sense. Um, so I grew up, grew up driving without it being like, you know, my parents forcing me into karting um, or going down like a traditional motorsport career route. Um, and so it was always a hobby to me. And then when I was 17, I started grass auto testing. Um, that was purely just for car control. Um, my dad didn't want me and my sister to be able to, to be out in the snowy lanes where we live, driving to school and, you know, crash the car. He wanted us to have some kind of idea of car handling. So uh, we, we did that. And I was, I was really competitive anyway, always competing in athletics and netball and all the different sports at school. Um, and I loved it. Um, and from there, when I was, that was when I was 14, sorry. And then when I was 17, I went to um, a Peugeot test. Um, it was around Rally Mont Blanc. So it was off the side of a mountain in France. And it was, yeah, I just fell in love with it there, really. That's amazing. And so which, um, in terms of the motorsports, obviously you are known for rallying. So tell us how it is in terms of rally driving and also I guess linking in also with Extreme, given it's an off-road motorsport. Yeah, Extreme is going to be an amazing championship. Uh, lots of different surfaces, so lots of skills that I can bring from rally to that, hopefully. Um, it's cool actually to see the championship coming together. Now some more drivers are being announced. Some teams are taking more of a racing route. Some are taking more of an off-road desert racing. Some are taking rally and rally cross. Um, it's going to be a big mix of drivers and I think that's quite unusual when you think of a championship normally it's very niche um, the same teams always kind of run it the same way and it becomes you know very similar quite predictable in a lot of championships so in this case I think it's really exciting especially going into the first years to see which approach is going to be the right one um, yeah so I'm I'm excited we've had a couple of t well we've had one proper test but me and Timmy also tried the car at the kind of media day um, so I think it's, you know, we're really excited about it. We're just going to make sure that over the next few months, we're going to do everything we can to cover all bases and hopefully be as fast as possible. Brilliant. And um, we'll touch upon Extremely a little bit, but um, obviously the format of, of, of the motorsport is one female driver and one male driver. Um, just want to ask, is that important to you in terms of, as far as I'm aware, you're part of the, the dare, to, dare to be different group and organization, which basically tries to encourage or people to get well females to get into motorsports is that is that something that's important to you when it came to actually signing up for to to for the racing seats on, on an extreme e yeah i think it's an amazing um thing you know anything that encourages more women into motorsport and provides opportunities at the top level as well i think is really positive um Desby Difference, a great campaign. I got involved with it at the beginning of my career. Um, it's now joined with the Women in Motorsport Commission, the FIA Commission. To I think it's rebranded onto Girls on, Girls on Track now. So they're running karting events for um, young girls and you know loads of different workshops, not just on the driver's side, but on the mechanic or engineering or presenting or whatever it might be. Every side of motorsport's covered. Um, so that's really cool to show girls. And we did some cool events where we'd start at the beginning of the day and said, has anyone considered a career in motorsport? And everyone had their hands down. And at the end of the day, everyone put their hands up. So um, yeah, that's really positive. And to be encouraging them at the right age. Um, but I think more from the extreme E side, I was really excited that it's not going to be traditional motorsport where a female might be involved because it looks good for PR or for the media. Now all the females are cho chosen because it's going to directly affect the team result. There's no individual element. It is the driver and the male, uh, the female and the male combined. That is basically the first one that crosses the finish line as a combined team. Um, and I don't really think that's been done before. So it gives a whole new credibility to the females. Um, you know, we're going to get the same testing. It's in everyone's interest for them to be fast. So I think it's offering a huge opportunity, which is something that I've never really come across before in my career. Um, and so to be shone in that light as well is really positive. And that's probably the thing that I'm the most excited about, about the championship. 
Excellent. Yeah. So likewise, I, I'm quite excited to see that format as well. And also in terms of team tactics, how they're going to go ahead with the female male drivers and who goes first, who goes last, whichever, what specialities are best for both drivers as well. I'm sure you you guys have already been discussing that um, uh, in the in the background. Yeah, I think so. But I think there's also, you know, it's a new championship. So regulations are still coming out. There's still a lot of unknowns with it. Um, we were testing just day before yesterday. Um and it was conversations that we were having, having, you know, we want to make sure that we've covered all bases when we get to the first event, but we don't know whether it will be a regulation for the female has to go first or the male has to go first or whether it's down to tactics and, you, you know, it's decided. Ultimately, also the driver change, who's faster? Is it faster to pull the girl out or to get the guy in? Um, yeah, loads of different points will come into it. Um, but it's all part of the learning process, I guess. And it's quite funny, the fact that we've got females and males. I'm quite lucky me and Timmy are similar height, but I'm imagining some teams might be opposite ends of the height spectrum. So they've got to think about seat positioning and how, you know, they're going to fit an insert. How's it going to work from that side? Because, you know, we can all be tenths apart or set just for a few seconds apart on the racetrack. But really, that's nothing when you think of a driver change in a similar way that the F1 pit stop's got to be right. It's no different, really. Um, all these little details, I think, will come into play. And it's really important that you cover everything for the first race. Absolutely. Might, maybe they'll have car swaps. That might be a, an option, depending on depending on how the... the because in Formula E, that used to be the case. They would used to swap cars in the Gen 1, if, if I'm not mistaken. So they might, that might be a, an option, but I've, I, I, I can't speak for it. You obviously know a lot more than I do, though. Yeah, I think that they're trying to cover it so that we're running on the same battery for the full race. Um, I know with Formula E, they've had to have kind of battery management, heat management strategies, but I think they're trying to show how technology's moved on and we're able to race now um, with one car, no fuel, like, you know, no no charging during the race. Um, and so we're able just to attack it. Um, so I might be wrong, you know, it's new championships and new regulations might come in, but the way that we're kind of training for it is that it will be a straight clean cut kind of Le Mans style driver changeover. Amazing. So you touched upon um, uh, gen f well, future generations getting into the motorsport. Now you're, you're relatively young in terms of yourself as well. So what, what, what advice would you give to people who want to get into motorsport and actually you said from 14 years old, you were already racing. It's, it's, it's incredible achievements that you had. So it, for you being kind of like the inspiration for younger generations, what would you um, suggest for them to, to do in order to, to try and get to that sort of level, that competitive level that you've, re you've achieved? I would just say, make sure you're having fun. And um, it was never something that I was pushed into. And I think that's what can go wrong in motorsport. You know, if you've gone into it at an early age, especially with the karting scene, there's so much pressure put onto people. So many, you know, on young people as well. So many things you're going through as a young person anyway. And with school pressures, I remember that, you know, it's massive nowadays, the school pressure and exams. And I think just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. And I'd say that probably with anything in life, really, any career that you get into, make sure you're doing it because you enjoy it. Um, Cause at the end of the day, that's the only reason you would be successful. You know, you have to put so much um, hard work in so much that people don't see so many sacrifices, so much dedication. Um, if you really want to go for it, that, you know, it's, it's, there's no point if you're not enjoying it. Um, but I would say that, yeah, they should get in touch with their local motor club Um that's how I started. Um, people will be there and they'll have contacts or people that know somebody that can help or even just offer their advice and their experience. I was lucky that my dad had done some rallying when he was younger, so I could rely a lot on his experience. Um, and that kind of helps, you know, anyone that you know uh, that has any info on the industry, because I know it's not that accessible if you're just walking into it um, with no help. So yeah, try and get some local sponsorship um, and see how the opportunity, opportunities unfold. I think grass auto testing is a really great place to start. It's really affordable. I started in like um, a 206 Peugeot that we kind of bought for 100 quid from the salvage site. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, that's just on grass. Um, we were able to drive it there and drive it home. Um, and that was just every Wednesday night after school or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a great place to start. And from there you meet people and um, hopefully you'll come across some opportunities. I always think if it's meant to be, it will be. So, you know, right place, right time and all of that. Absolutely. And uh, just touching upon, um, you had a, in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, you were presenting Katie's Amazing Machines on CBBS. Was that also an inspiration for that in order for you to, to, to enlighten younger generations and just be like, look, this is what I do and this is how cool things are. And of course, these are the machines that we're going to be looking at. Yeah, it was a fantastic opportunity. Not something that I went looking for at all. Um, 
I did an interview on BBC Breakfast and then the producer from Kids TV phoned me and he was like, we've got this idea. We filmed a pilot for it, but they were like, you know, it would take like a couple of years for it to get commissioned. That's just the way that kids TV works. But within two months, we were actually kind of filming originally the, the first episodes. It was really fast. It was something that they really wanted to promote. Um, you know, there was a massive space for a message like it. So, um, yeah, it was really cool. We got into filming straight away and um, I loved it. It was, you know, ridiculous things. Like I'd learn how to fly a helicopter in the morning and then I'd learn how to like fly a jet plane in the afternoon or a submarine or a snowplow in Val Turin. Like it was the most amazing opportunities. Um, and it was also a way for me to be able to contribute towards my rally budget. Um, at the time I was massively looking for sponsorship and so that enabled me to go rallying as well that year. Um, it was always finding little ways to make it happen. You know, it's never been like I've been given a chance and here you go, right, you're going rallying next year. It was always rally by rally, how are we going to make this work? Um, but yeah, really happy memories. That's amazing. That's great to hear. Uh, speaking about um, giving chances, I just also want to touch upon in terms of in terms of females in motorsport. Um, do you feel that females are not given enough chance? Like, you know, you, Extreme E is a completely different format, but looking at motorsport on the whole there is well there's a bit of a divide between males and females in terms of there's ma it's a male dominated motorsport at the well, at the moment do you feel that one that should be changing or secondly do you feel that there shouldn't be a divide between males and females when it comes to motorsport specifically i.e not like in tennis or in football for example yeah i think you know motorsport as a whole um we can look at as not being a particularly accessible sport it's just to do with the huge budgets that were involved. It's not massively um, in reach, you know, especially if you don't have a contact or, you know, it's not something that you can just say, oh, yeah, that's the easy route. I'm going to go and play football all day, get better at scoring goals and I'll get noticed. It doesn't really work like that. So I would probably look at the industry as a whole rather than thinking, oh, we need to create more opportunities for females because I know plenty of guys that also haven't had the opportunity. They're fast, but don't have the budget or, you know, never have quite that, the right shot at it. Um, I would, yeah, if I could change one thing about the industry, it would be how we recognise talent. Um, and I think, you know, that's the fair way to do it. I don't want to say we should be creating loads of opportunities for women because I'm a firm believer that, you know, the women can compete against the men. So while, yes, I think we should really be encouraging women into motorsport, ultimately, I would still like to see the fastest drivers on the grid, the ones that have, you know, worked hard and, uh, you know, are talented. Um, so I wouldn't segregate women in motorsport, but I think we should be encouraging them in and we should be encouraging them to see themselves as a competitor against the men. Um, and then of course, I'd like to see the teams um, looking at it evenly and thinking, okay, yeah, but she's as fast as the guy. So we'll, we'll take a chance on her. Um, you know, I would be putting, putting the backing into the fast females or the ones that are coming up through the leagues or creating some kind of, you know, rising star program, which I know that, you know, people are looking at the FIA, looking at doing that for um, young females in rallying. And I think that's really positive. Um, but yeah, it's just getting these initiatives off the ground and seeing how effective they are. Um, but I think, does that kind of answer your question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a great, that's a great answer. No, it, it really makes sense. And I, I like, I like it in terms of your approach, in terms of making it more accessible because like in Formula One, I, I, that's why Formula E was created or in part created because it's the, the entry level in terms of requirements for manufacturers or teams to get into formula in the first place was far lower in terms of cap versus formula one which is you know multi-million pound budget so um yeah that, that that sort of kind of highlights to most people that getting into motorsports as it is for a driver or even a manufacturer is actually quite a large commitment so um yeah that's 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 really nice to hear in terms of your your side of stuff um now going into of racing so you were the european rally championship ladies trophy in 2016 i just want to say how did that feel to you when you when you won it and going from there what did it what what did it do to you in terms of in terms of racing sorry yeah well um it wasn't something that i went out you know set out to win i won that in my first year really um and it was you know, while, whilst it's really cool to have trophies like that that encourage women into motorsport and shine the spotlight on women and, you know, if a female's thinking of looking at going to, into a rallying championship, they'll always look to go where there's other competitors in their category, I guess. Um, but I was a lot more proud when I, uh, a couple of, well, probably, yeah, a couple of years later, um, I came fourth overall in the two-wheel drive category and that was against all the fastest men in Europe. Um, so that was probably 
you know, I, I've said earlier, I always view myself against, as a competitor against the men. And I think for me on a performance um, grade, that was against some of the guys that will go on to be highest level in the world championship. Um, and that was also run on a shoestring budget. I was using used tires off my teammates' cars because I never had the full budget to do the championship. So for me, I've always wanted to compare myself against the fastest junior, whether that's a male or a female at the time. Um, but yeah, the ladies category is something that didn't have, you know, it doesn't have that many entrants. Um, just because, as we were talking earlier, we need to promote the message of getting more women into motorsport. Um, so in terms of how, how it felt to me personally as a competitor, as someone that doesn't, you know, wants to work for it and wants to earn it and wants to be valued as a fast driver, not just a fast woman. Um, I think that the, the nothing kind of, I don't know, I'm not easily satisfied. So for me, it was like, yeah, okay, I've come first lady, but where am I against the guys at that moment in time? And that was something that kind of drove me. And it still does drive me, to be honest with you. I was going to say, is that going to be driving your motivation then in Extreme E, given obviously the format, as we talked about? But is that is that going to be the major driving factor for you? You want to win it, obviously, with Andretti Motorsport as well, but is it that that drive that's going to get you there? Yeah, definitely. And um I think it's something that, you know, it's ha- it, the conversation is really going around with Extreme E at the minute because there's plenty of fast guys out there. There's plenty of fast racers. Um, loads of, you know, at the top level of motorsport, you just see the full grid of mo- men. So there's plenty of men to be on the start line, but, you know, the buck's really going to drop with the women. Who's going to be fast? Um, I think there'll be a bigger disparity just because we haven't got that many women at the top level of motorsport consistently um, that, you know, will they pick a racing driver? Will they pick a rally driver? Will they pick an off-road driver? Um, there's not that many out there to choose from. Um, so I think that, you know, whoever gets the fast girl and whoever is able to push that, um, that's the message at the minute is that's what's going to make a difference um, to the results. So I think that's really exciting. And that's, you know, putting women even in an even higher regard in terms of performance. Um, it really does count. Um, equally the driver change as well you know that's a lot of seconds to be won and lost there but these are the kind of things that we're thinking about for next year and that's something that I'm massively excited about even testing with Timmy last week um, you know having him as a benchmark and then being able to do the driver overlays and see where I'm faster where he's faster and you know compare it and then work together on that is really exciting and I've learned so much from him already from sitting next to him and he's got a huge race craft from his years of rally cross he's done a lot of single seater as well and um, we've got we've got a really cool team behind us as well loads of experience that's coming into play Um, and I'm just really excited to be a part and honored to be a part of the outfit really and um, in there from the beginning and hopefully we're gonna have a really positive year next year. It's very different. Um, it's the future. So it's exciting to see how it's going to develop, but also just driving it from the beginning. And Timmy was working on it probably a year ago. He drove it for the first time. And um, he said, you know, even at this stage is in the development, it is a race car. It is, you know, there's no messing around with it. It is there and it's there to do a job and it does it. It's, and I, I looked at it the first time I saw it and I don't think it, pictures really do it justice, just the size of it. Um, and even now I've seen it a couple of times in real life and each morning when I walk into testing, I'm like, oh my God, it is massive. Um, and it's so true, you know, it is, it is a beast. And you think from the outside, gosh, gosh that's going to be so hard to drive, but it's really not, it, you know, the size of it, it comes into perspective as soon as you're racing. Uh, it just feels like a really well-built race car that is just really easy to drive to be honest with you um it wants to be driven well and it's um you know you work with the car i think there's a lot of things when we're thinking of um the electric motors and the mapping mappings that are able to do that i've never experienced before coming from my rally routes and i know it's the same for timmy um there's a lot that they can do on torque distribution in relation to your lateral g's or your steering angle um there's so many different settings they can have on power on mappings um on finding the traction um so i think it's it's a new way of working but a lot of the basic driver and that's what me and timmy are there to do we we're there to just fill the car and adapt to it and to drive it fast and i think a lot of that is the same as our backgrounds on off-road um on gravel um so it I'm excited. It's different. It's the little things that you don't really notice, like when you lock wheels, 
you normally I'm used to hearing that you know with a combustion <laughs> engine that's kind of the first stand is the, the knocking and with this you don't get that sensation so it's just adapting the small things that okay I've got to be massively sensitive now I've got to feel it through the seat when I'm locking wheels um or you know I don't have to do gears anymore I found myself coming up to hairpins and trying to knock down the gears but there's nothing there you know it's just it's almost easy Sunday kind of automatic driving um but it's a massively exciting program and the test that we've been doing is just a shakedown on the car recently. So it was sort of half power. Um, but when I tested it at full power on the media day, it was a weapon. It really is like a rocket ship. Gives you that launch. I can imagine that amount of Gs that you get. And given the suspension must be relatively soft, given the, the terrain that you have to go over, it's probably going to give you that one of those type of kind of drag race type of things that you see in, in America with this quarter milers. But uh, yeah, that's, that's exciting. So I guess my final question is, are you going to full send it over the first jump in order to try and get the bonus point or not? <laughs> I don't think we have a choice in that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, the only way is flat out really, isn't it? Um, especially when you think that there's uh, extra power boosts up for grabs. I love that. I love, it's like when you think about it is, I know it's been done in Formula E with the kind of power boost if they run over lives, but it's like playing Mario Kart, isn't it? Um, <laughs> the way that the fans can interact and choose the grid play and they choose their favorite team, and the grid position. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's definitely designed for the younger generation. And it's, you know, when you combine that with all the environmental messages and the work that we're going to be doing and um, the legacy programs and the scientists' involvement, um, it's a much bigger picture than just the racing. It's innovative, it's the future, it's engaging the fans, it's electric. Um, and I think this will be one of the pioneering forms of motorsport going forwards. Um, we look at Boris Johnson bringing forwards electric cars to 2030 now. It's not that long away when you think of it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here from the beginning. I'm excited to be working with such an amazing team um, and Timmy as well. I can't tell you how well we get on in the car and how um, positive our experience has been working together so far. That's amazing. Yeah, that, that team chemistry can make all the difference. So hopefully you guys um, go ahead and provide a fantastic team experience and go ahead and winning races as, as, a, as, a, as a team. So that'll be amazing to see. And um, yeah, that that's, concludes all my questions, to be honest with you, uh, Katie. I, I want to thank you again for your, for your time. Uh, is there anything else you, you want to, to raise or anything else you want, want to talk about that we haven't covered in the interview? I don't think so. I think that was great. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thanks a lot uh, again for your time. And um, for those people who want to follow Katie, you can check it down in the description below. There'll be linked to your Instagram and Twitter and all that good stuff. Um, and of course, um, Andretti Motorsport as well. Uh, the guys who are, have got that livery behind it, quite American livery behind. So yeah. So thanks a lot again for your time, Katie. No worries. Thanks for your time.